I want to talk about is the notation. So sometimes you'll see when you're doing compositions of functions, this f of g of x. See this little uh, circle here? Uh, sometimes students uh, mistakenly think this is like a zero or a multiplication symbol, so you don't want to make that mistake. All this represents here is that we're taking the g function and we're putting it into the f function. So I oftentimes like to take this and rewrite it as f of g of x meaning that we're starting from the inside, just like we do with an order of operations, and we work our way out, okay? So basically the way these functions are working is you're starting on the inside, you're saying I'm gonna put my x, right, into my g function, I'm gonna get an answer, or okay, an output, and then I'm gonna take that output, and I'm gonna put it into my f function, and I'm gonna get our final result. So it's basically like a two-step process. So the way functions work, again, is that whatever's in parentheses, say for example, we're working with this f of x function uh, equals 2x minus 3, whatever's here in parentheses, that's going to go in place of x on the right side of the equation. So it's just a substitution. So here we're putting 3 in place of x, and then we can simplify that. 6 minus 3, which is 3, and we got it. So let's get into some examples, and I'll show you how this works. So for example number 1, we've got f of g of 2. Okay, so what we do with this one, this is a numerical example. Some of these other ones, they just involve variables. But what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this. We're going to think of this as f of g of 2. We're going to start on the inside, go to our g function. And again, remember, whatever is in the parentheses, that goes in for x on the right. So this is actually going to be 2 squared minus 1, which is 4 minus 1 is 3. So now this is equal to 3, so that's going to be f of 3. So we go to our f function, we put in 3, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 equals 3, and we've got it. So it's just a multi-step process, right? Let's go to example number 2, g of h of x. Again, I'm going to start off and just rewrite this a little bit differently, g of h of x. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start on the inside, h of x equals 4 over x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace h of x with what it equals. That's 4 over x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our g function. And again, remember whatever's in parentheses, that goes in for x on the right. So that's going to equal, we're going to put the 4 over x in place of x. This is like our new input. Think of x as like your input. Substitute that in. We're going to then square it, and we're going to subtract 1. Now, before I simplify, oftentimes in these problems, they'll say, well, you know, what is the domain, or what are the restrictions on the domain? So before I simplify, I just kind of analyze, and I say, hmm, looks like x cannot equal 0, because we, do, we can't divide by 0. That's undefined. So you might want to state that at this point, you know, x cannot equal 0. But let's simplify. So we're going to square the numerator. We're going to square the denominator. That's 16 over x squared minus 1. And that's your final result. So now if you wanted to find out what's g of h of 2, what you could do is you could just put 2 in place of x here in this, you know, this final uh, equation. And that's going to give you, you know, your end result without having to do it in two steps. Okay, so we're basically finding a formula that does that all in one. Uh, one step. Let's go to example number three. We've got m of f of x. Again, I like to rewrite this like, like this. I think it's a little bit more descriptive. We're going to start on the inside. f of x is 2x minus 3, so let's put that in place of f of x. Now we're going to go to our m function, which is over here. Whatever is in parentheses goes in place of x on the right. So what we have here is we have 3. Instead of x, I'm going to put 2x minus 3 in place of x. So whatever's in parentheses, that's what you're putting in place of x there. And then, you know, we can try to simplify. This is about as far as we can go. But if you want to analyze the domain, you can see that we can't take the square root of uh, negative numbers. That would give us imaginary numbers. So whatever's underneath this square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. So let's just solve this inequality here. Divide both sides by 2. And you can see that x has to be greater than or equal to 3 halves. 